Let's just start with the question. No introductions, no noise, just the questions, the question that I get asked over and over by my clients, by the people I guide, by the people I love, people around me, if not daily, then certainly multiple times a week. And here's the question, do you want to change? Do you want to change? Can I change is the question. How do I change, B? Help me change. They come to me through my lens as a logotherapist, the work of Viktor Frankl, meaning-centered therapy. They come to me through the Enneagram. They come to me through Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism, spiritual practice. However they come to me and whatever lens they are, they're looking through, it always comes down to, can I change? I want to change. I need to change. Please help me change. Does this resonate with you? You're not alone. But here's the truth. You don't change. Your husband's not going to change. Your wife's not going to change. Your kids are not going to change. You're not going to change. You shouldn't change. People don't change. They don't fundamentally change. What was it? Lady Gaga. Baby, I was born this way, and so were you. Now, you say to me, B, then what's the point of you know, coaching and counseling with you or with anybody? What's the point of the Enneagram? What's the point of doing this work if I'm destined to be this person? Sometimes this person I can put up with, oftentimes, a lot of the people I coach and guide, people I don't exactly like. I go to the mirror and I look at that person and I don't like who I see staring back at me, or I don't like the things I've done in the past, or the ways I've treated certain people. So you're telling me, B, that I can't change? You cannot change, absolutely, unequivocally. Your actions can, and your beliefs can, and the way you move through the world can, but that's not you. As my teacher and mentor, Viktor Frankl, taught, as all great spiritual traditions teach, you're not the flesh suit. You're, thank God for that, by the way, because I'm losing the flesh suit or I'm gaining it down here. This ain't me. This is a part of me for sure. This is a piece of what allows me to show up in this incarnation and move through my life to be in relationship with my wife and my kids and my clients, my family, friends, etc. But this ain't me. This is returned to the earth. This, thing's bra- this thing breaks down. This thing, my, my brain, my heart, emotions, all of this can get sick. I can become detached from it. I can, I can lose connection with it. But the essence of who I am, as Frankl called it, your nuos, as um, Jung called it, your self, capital S. Some people call it the true you, your neshama in Kabbalah, your spirit, your essence. Call it Bob's big boy. It doesn't matter what you call it, him or her. It matters that that's who you know. It's who you are. What was it? C.S. Lewis, you don't have a soul. You are a soul. You have a body. You are a soul. You are a spirit. You are true you. You are Bob's big boy. You are Bob's big girl. Whatever you want to call it, it is you. And it doesn't change. You know, I've shared this before. I'll share it again. It's like Michelangelo who was asked, how did you create David in the the statue David in that marble? Right? That, That magnificent statue of David. How did you create it? To which he said, I didn't create it. David was always in the marble. I just chipped away everything that wasn't David. Our work is to chip away everything that is accumulated upon us, that we've confused as us, that we've done out in the world, but we are, yes, responsible for our actions and our behaviors, but they aren't who we are. They're what we do. I don't know what it means when somebody says to me, but be He's a good person. He just did bad things. That that is meaningless to me. A person is what they do, not who he is. I think the worst axe murderer still has a soul, still has a spirit. I do believe there's a point of no return when we can lose our connection to it. There is such a thing as evil, of horrors, of atrocities. But the vast majority of us, all of us listening, or all of you listening to this video, You are what you do. You're good if you do good things. You're bad if you do bad things. But you can change those things. Your essence is pure, is good. Return to that. Back to the statue. It was said that the piece of marble that Michelangelo decided to carve from was passed over by so many other artists who saw only a rejected piece of marble, an inferior piece of marble, a marble that just wasn't worthy or deserving of the statue they wanted to create, but not Michelangelo. He saw that that was the perfect slab of marble for that perfect statue that was already within 
in the marble. His only work was to reveal it, to reveal him, to reveal her, to, to redeem that piece of marble by getting rid of everything that was simply getting in the way. And that's how we do our work in this world. You don't change. You get back to you. And this is a paradigm shift. It may sound like semantics. It's not. When I'm working with somebody in this chair, when you realize that you don't have to become somebody else, you don't have to change your outward appearance. You just simply have to remember, to remember who you are, to get back to him, to get back to her. That's a whole different journey. That's not a journey about becoming and doing and achieving and goals and accomplishment. That is the noise of what I call the morning of life, what Carl Jung calls the morning of life. It's the world we live in. To be more, to, to, to become you, you must do more, you must be more, you must, you must achieve more. The afternoon of life, the second half of life, this life of Michelangelo mastery and wisdom is saying, I won't play that game anymore. I won't go out and achieve and conquer, conquer and, and, and do and become. I want to return to my slab of marble. I want to get back to the essence, to chip away, to let go of, to redeem the statue that was me, that is me, that will always be me, found in my particular slab. And your particular slab doesn't need skin lightening or, or tanning or tucking or extending. It doesn't need changing. It does need reduction, but not that kind of reduction, although I, I might have to do some post-New Year's reduction of my own. It means getting back to our core, getting back to our basics and remembering. There's a great mystical teaching in Kabbalah that says every baby comes into this world right before they come here. They know everything they are. They know who they are. And then an angel comes, and the angel touches them right here on this lip. If I didn't have this beard, you could see the dent, and that dent forget the name of it, is from the, the finger of the angel who touches the baby on the lips and says, shh. And in that moment, all of the baby's memories disappear. All of it goes away. And the angel says, shh, don't tell the secrets of the universe, the secrets of you, the secrets of your statue, but go find him. Go find her. And so we come into this world having forgotten not trying to discover, but returning to who we are, remembering who we are, and becoming that version of us, dropping away all of the things that are just accumulating on top of our statue, getting, the way, getting in the way of the true you. That's a whole different journey than doing and achieving and, and becoming. You don't become. You simply return to you. People don't change. They return. People don't need to change your exactly the you that you signed up for, that you needed to be, and the curriculum that you're here to work through. You're Michelangelo. Now go out there and don't carve your statue. Just chip away and reveal everything that is underneath that because that statue is in you. That statue is the true you. Jump over to defiantspirit.org where you can learn more about how to reveal the true you through the Enneagram, through logotherapy, and through much, much more. Until then, defy your number, right? Defy that slab of marble and return to your spirit. Re return to that statue. Return to the true you.